welcome again to this is episode two of Inside in Mumbai. And what we're going to do is we're going to offer a hat. We figured out if we could get 25 comments, which is a lot to ask, we'll pick somebody at random to ship the hat if we get 25 reasonable comments. Uh, if not, it'll go to the next episode. But uh, thanks again. I thought today what we would do is we'd talk only about TNF. And RJ, to start with, what is TNF and what does TNF do? Yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure to be on this episode of Immune Bio today. Um, TNF is a cytokine, an inflammatory cytokine. What a cytokine is is a, is a protein, something that immune cells produce to change behavior. And in the case of TNF, it is to change the behavior associated with inflammation. And it turns out, historically, TNF, which stands for tumor necrosis factor, was the first cytokine discovered. And it's appropriate that it was the first cytokine discovered because it is actually the master cytokine. And what I mean by the master cytokine is it's the first one that comes up. So when an inflammatory event starts, the first thing an immune cell does is it produces some TNF, and then that stimulates the cell to make other cytokines, and mainly there's about five other cytokines that make up the inflammatory response. And so if when TNF goes up, the other cytokines go up, and suddenly you have an inflammatory response. So TNF, I think the important message here, it's really truly the kingpin. It's the master of destruction when it comes to the in chronic inflammatory response. And when you have a chronic inflammatory response, what occurs is you usually have cell death, right? You have cell destruction over a period of time. So let me just and take you back a step because, in fact, the, the body was very uh, – evolution was very efficient in doing only things that helped survival. So TNF was – and the inflammatory response was developed for acute inflammation – to protect us mainly against infection. Right. Because historically, we infections were everywhere. And if you got an infection, that caused a problem. What, what David referring to is that when one of the great successes of modern medicine is we now live a longer period of time, very long period of time. You remember in, in 1900, our lifespan was 40 years old. Now the average lifespan is uh, 76 years old. So we've, more, we've almost doubled our lifespan. The problem is we weren't built to live that long. And so what David said is that as we get older, the TNF starts showing up in places that it shouldn't, and we get this low-grade grade grumbling inflammation, which instead of protecting us, begins to hurt us. And that's what we call chronic inflammation, chronic inflammation of aging or inflammaging. Right. And yeah, I'd say, what, three, four decades ago, they recognized this problem and they started developing drugs against it. And they developed a whole series of monoclonal antibodies that targeted TNF. And these drug franchises today are amongst the largest drug franchises on the planet. Drugs like Humira, Embrel, Remicade, you know, Embrel, for example, was a huge drug that helped make Amgen, as an example. And these drugs, you know, rheumatoid arthritis, where you have this chronic inflammation in the joints, and you used to see people that had hands like this and they couldn't pick up a pen or a cup. We don't see that much anymore, do we? And that's because these drugs took away this chronic inflammation. But there was a problem with that, right? Yeah, so, 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 so what happened is, is you're absolutely right, is the first place that TNF was recognized as being a pharmaceutical target was in the field of autoimmunity, and mainly the two areas, one was Crohn's disease, which is an inflammatory bowel disease, and the other was rheumatoid arthritis. And in these, both of these cases, they were treating um, persistent acute inflammation. The term chronic inflammation hadn't quite become part of the medical lexicon. And these medicines absolutely revolutionized the lives of these patients. You went from women, primarily women, who were debilitated to the point where they couldn't use their hands. You ended up with children and younger patients who had Crohn's disease and had 
you know, weight loss and fistulas, and it was just a nightmare. And overnight, these patients became normal. I mean, they had a normal life, and you couldn't tell who in the room had these diseases because the diseases were so well treated by these early TNF inhibitors. We call them non-selective TNF inhibitors. But David said there's a price to pay. And in medicine, there's usually a price to pay with medicine. And it turns out in stamping down that inflammatory response, the patients ended up immunosuppressed. And what I mean by immunosuppressed is they became susceptible to the diseases that your immune system is supposed to fight, mainly infection, and it turns out cancer. There's an increase in risk of some types of cancers. So they traded off the serious day-to-day -day diseases of either Crohn's disease, inflammatory bowel disease, or, or rheumatoid arthritis, and they took a measurable risk of infection and, um, and uh, um, um, increased risk of cancer. Now, that was a great trade-off in 20 years ago, but medicine's gotten a lot better. And even though those drugs are now being used, People are beginning to wonder, is there a way to have their cake and eat it too? That is, get all the benefits without any of the liabilities. So we know that TNF inhibitors first made their mark in autoimmune disease. But we do know that TNF is a contributor to many other types of diseases that cannot yet be treated because of this immunosuppression and some other complications resulting from anti the current non-selective anti-TNF treatments. What then makes what we're doing at Expro so different from that existing franchise? Yeah, so the problem, as I said, was the trade-off, the, the, the term we use in medicine is the risk-benefit ratio very much favored getting rid of these very bad diseases of Crohn's and rheumatoid arthritis. The diseases of chronic inflammation are a little more subtle. They're a little more elegant. They can be as things like decreased hearing, decreased vision, decreased cognitive function, muscle, muscle, slow muscle wasting yeah. associated with aging. So they're more subtle, but you're also dealing with more fragile pe people because these diseases tend to show up once you're 65 and older, or these problems show up when you're 65 and older. So we needed, if we're going to target TNF, we needed to actually do it in a way that you didn't suddenly take a 75-year-old and increase their risk of infection, take an 80-year-old and increase their risk of cancer, or take a 60-year-old and increase their risk of demyelinating disease, which is a newly discovered problem of these non-selective TNF inhibitors. And that's where the science changed. People began to dig down, you know, and they found out there were two cytokines of TNF. There's something called the soluble TNF, which is the bad TNF and which causes autoimmune disease and inflammation and all that destruction. And then there's something called transmembrane TNF, which is the good TNF. The good TNF because it protects, it protects neurons, it protects, improves the function of the immune system, promotes remyelination. So there's a real yin and a yang. And the old cells got cause problems with both. So you fix the inflammation, but you end up with infection. And now we have a drug called Dexpro using a novel technology called the dominant negative technology, which actually just takes out the bad half. We take out soluble TNF, have no effect on transmembrane TNF. So we get all the benefits of getting rid of soluble TNF but we have none of the liabilities of getting rid of transmembrane TNF. So that opened the door for us to move into areas where TNF is clearly a patho causing pathology, but you can't afford the risk of what we call in medicine off-target effects that are associated with safety liabilities of infection, cancer, and demyelination. So thank you for that, RJ. So a simple, simple summary, I think, would be that we have a TNF inhibitor that eliminates the black box warning issues that the existing TNF inhibitors have, which allows us to go into disease categories that the existing TNF inhibitors are contraindicated in. Is that correct? 
So that's correct. I, I think of it a little bit differently. The first generation drugs, 20 years old, they were good. They made big differences in people's lives. But as technology improved, people demanded more. Science was able to deliver more. And now we have a drug that is a much more of a precision medicine that really tar goes right to the heart of TNF biology and TNF-driven inflammation. And you get rid of TNF-driven inflammation safely and effectively. Well, great. Thank you, RJ, for explaining the difference between the non-selective and obviously XPRO, our drug. What we'll do in our next episode is we're going to talk about some of the phase one trial results that we have and why XPRO in terms of targeting chronic inflammation, neuroinflammation, and soluble TNF in the brain makes a difference. So thank, thank you, you, David.